Welcome to the Communication Diva Podcast, Episode 12. In today's podcast, Jen Swanson will discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly of customer service. The Communication Diva Legal Department has vetted those parts where Jen rants against the bad and the ugly, so that no individuals or businesses will be in a position to sue. As far as the good goes, Hey Macy's, how about a nice gift card or something for the free publicity? And now it's over to Jen. Oh, and have a nice day. Welcome to episode 12 of Communication Diva. This is Jen Swanson, and it's so good to have you listening. I wanted to take a minute Uh, today just to thank some of my listeners who have been very faithful over the past uh, several months and who have left comments and come and said hello on the website so I know their names. Um, I'll just mention a few of them today and I'd like to do this again in the future. Uh, So I'd just like to give a shout out to Judy Anderson from the Vancouver area who at the moment is very busy getting organized for her son's high school graduation. And thank you, Judy, for listening and for your thoughtful comments. Always great to hear from you. To Roland Legg from Capus Casing, Ontario, and I just love saying that name because it's hard to spell and kind of hard to say. I hope you're staying warm up there, my friend, and thank you again for your comments and for being a faithful listener to Communication Diva. To Jackie Kernick, and I'm not exactly sure where you are, Jackie. I know that you're somewhere in the UK, and uh, I always appreciate the little comments that you leave on Facebook and uh, also on the website. So thank you, Jackie, for your listening. And the last person today that I want to thank is Spencer Burnside of StudioBurnside.com. And Spencer, I'm not sure exactly where you are located, but I know that uh, uh, Spencer had his own podcast, a Christmas podcast last season, and that recently he has put up a series of really lovely wedding videos on his website. So if you want to check out Spencer's website, he's at studioburnside.com. And uh, thanks again for listening to Communication Diva Spencer and keep up your really great work. So to the rest of you listening, I would love to know where you are and who you are and where you're from. And uh, and to do that, you could come to www.communicationdiva.com and say hello. We can also be heard on Stitcher Smart Radio, and you can download the free app from our site. You'll see a big button on the right-hand side. And if you enter the promo code Jen Swanson, which is my name, J-E-N-N, and Swanson all pushed together, no spaces, you could possibly win a $100 gift card from Stitcher Smart Radio. And if you do download this free app, it is an affiliate link, so I will receive a dollar, and I thank you for that in advance. There have been all sorts of people joining up, and um, and with that app uh, on your phone or your iPod or any of those smart devices, you can take podcasts on the go with you to the gym or in your car or wherever you are. And I've been listening to all sorts of podcasts uh, that I've discovered on that app because I have it on my iPhone and uh, I have been really enjoying it. So today I wanted to talk to you about customer service. And I have plans to bring in someone who has taught extensively uh, on this subject, but I haven't uh, been able to set that up yet. But today it's just me. And I'll be talking about some of the things that I have observed both professionally and privately over the years. And I have some stories to tell you. Um, the other day I walked into a place of business, it was a printing store, and the person at the desk didn't look up. And she finished what she was doing while I stood there waiting. And uh, and when she did finally look up, she didn't smile. In fact, she kind of looked annoyed that I was interrupting her. And when I explained that I what I was there for, she didn't quite sigh outrightly, but it was clearly evident that I was being inconvenient. Now, I was going in there to order some supplies, and it was what something they do all the time, and it wasn't anything unusual or weird or extraordinary. This is kind of what the service was at this printing shop. Anyway, she eventually warmed up and got the work done. But if I had to give her a grade for customer service, I can tell you she would have failed. (laughs) 
Now, I'm not sure what retail people are being taught about this topic these days because I'm not in the retail industry, but、uh, I would imagine that it has to do with a, a lot with the company that you work for because I think it's more of an emphasis with some companies than with others. But in my corner of the world, there seem to be some serious issues、uh, with a lack of decent customer service. And I'm just going to rant here for a moment. So, Um, fast forward if you don't want to hear this, but I sometimes struggle with,、uh, and I don't know if you do, but with the whole tipping concept in restaurants because of this. It seems often that tips are built in or are expected. I'm finding that more and more and more. And even some places that are fast food places that hand you the,、uh, the machine to put your debit card in and, and are expecting a tip in a fast food restaurant. And, and I find that a bit stunning, actually.、Um, and to me, the custom of tipping is that it is a bonus for good service. And, and usually for service where someone comes to your table and is serving you and it's a, a longer,、um, a longer relationship, shall we say, than, than standing at a counter ordering your own food and carrying it to your own seat. Now, I was a server in a family restaurant and then in a truck stop when I was a teenager and a young adult,、uh, before and during college. And I earned my tips. You know, I understand the concept that wages are often really poor. And that's, that's something I kind of blame on the restaurant,、uh, not on,、uh, on, you know, on the workers or the customers. But I find it highly annoying that I'm expected to leave, you know, a 15% tip regardless of the level of service. And I don't know if any of you from places other than North America have thoughts about this, but if you do, speak up and let us know. I think that the tipping issue is, is a bit out of hand here, and I get, I get really annoyed、um, when it's built into the bill. Now, I understand building it into the bill when you're dealing with、uh, a party of people, because sometimes when you have a great big party and it takes an awful lot of work and you're running around and you're serving all of these people and then you you know you get three dollars out of it and it's taken you an hour and a half to deal with this table of 20 people that's not fair i understand that but at the same time the whole custom of tipping is is to reward for good service and、uh, and i think Um, it's become expected. And, and that's my little rant. So there's the end of the rant. <laughs> but, but feel free to jump in, please, if you have thoughts about that. So back to customer service stories. I have another outstanding example, and believe me, I have many, and you probably have some too, of、um, interesting customer service. So I was in a grocery store about a year ago buying some food, and I was at the till, and I was standing there waiting in line. I, had, I wasn't quite up to the till person yet, and I noticed one of those very large boards that has gift cards on it. And I, I see these all over the place now with all sorts of gift cards for all sorts of services. And when I finally got up to where it was my turn and the clerk was there, I asked the girl, If there was a card for a certain cell phone provider, because I needed to top up my son's cell phone. And,、uh, and I was nice about it. And she said, without even looking at the board, no, we don't carry that one. And so I said, and mostly I was saying it to myself, I was saying, oh, for some reason I thought I had bought it here before. Well, apparently this comment completely. Offended her. She stopped what she was doing and she looked at me, and in an extremely defensive voice, she said, Are you telling me that I don't know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and I was actually taken quite aback. You know, I said,、uh, No. I said, I know that I bought one of these cards at a grocery store and I just thought it was this one. Well, it wasn't, she said. And she proceeded to rather violently continue to check out my food. <laughs> and I was stunned. You know, this particular grocery store requires their employees to read the customer name once it comes up on the bill. They have one of these points cards so they know who you are, you know. And they're supposed to thank the customer by name at the end of the transaction. So she didn't even look at me and she mumbled, Thank you, Mrs. and handed me the bill and then stormed off. And, and I was thoroughly stunned. I was truly amazed at this.、Um, You know, I, I can't even think of a word right now to describe this. Maybe hostile would be a good word. Hostile customer service. And you know, I almost went 
to the customer service desk, maybe to find a manager or something to complain. But I was really short on time. I had to be somewhere to pick up kids, so I didn't end up doing it. And I have regretted it ever since because I am fairly certain that the management of that grocery store would not want that kind of service being given on a regular basis. And and I think, you know, um, training was needed. Somebody needed to speak to this person about the concept of customer service. Um, I don't know. Now, whatever was going on for her, obviously our interaction was basically the last straw, if I'm going to use a cliche. So something else had been bothering her. So, you know, the issue was not the issue, to use another cliche. Um, it might have been a series of some things that had accumulated until my question broke it open and her anger and frustration came flooding out and I was the lucky recipient, you know. Um, something else was driving her crazy. Maybe she'd had a bad day. You know, who knows? We don't know. But whatever it was, she was um, taking it out on the customer, which is truly terrible customer service. So that was uh, <laughs> that was another another story. Now I have lots of good stories too, and there are some some really good examples of wonderful customer service. And I'll give you one of those. Um, and I, I've had many again of people who have gone above and beyond. One of these happened last fall, right before my wedding. I got married um, for the second time in October. And I was in Bellingham, which is a town in Washington State in the U.S., right across the border from where I live. And I was shopping at a Macy's, which is a big American department store. And I was looking for a particular type of red shoe. This was a, you know, this this was something I wanted to wear. I had a, a, a long dress that I was wearing, and I wanted to wear nice red shoes under my gown, you know, just for fun. And it, we were having kind of a low key, relaxed kind of a service. And I wanted a particular style of high heeled shoe called Mary Jane's that have little straps across. And it turns out that at that particular time, they were hard to find. Now, of course, since I've seen several of them, <laughs> which is the way it is. But at the time, this is what I was hoping to find. So at Macy's, I found a beautiful pair of deep, dark red shoes that were lovely, but they didn't have the straps. And so as it was getting closer and closer to the wedding, and I was running out of time because I was working, and I was just launching this website and all the rest of it, I decided that I would buy the shoes that I had found because they really, really were pretty, pretty, and I would end up using those. And I'm actually going to post a picture of them just for fun in the show notes because uh, uh, if you want to see what I ended up with, I know some of you are uh, are shoe fans, so <laughs> there you go. Um, but I was explaining all of this my conundrum to the sales clerk and I think her name was Kelly I'm not entirely sure but she was young and bubbly and she was very sympathetic and she was also really really helpful she said the return policy was very good at the store and if I bought the shoes that day and then found better ones later I would have no problem returning the first ones so that right away made me feel better and uh, and so I ended up buying them. She also asked if she could have my phone number in case anything came in that she thought might be of interest in the meantime. And so that was all very nice and, and she was pleasant and it was a good experience and I bought the shoes and off I went. Well, I was completely surprised when a week later I returned home from work to find a message on my voicemail from Kelly saying that she thought I might be interested in some shoes that had come into the store, but she knew that I, I lived far away, so she didn't want me to make a special trip. So what she did is she gave me the product number and the name of them and suggested I look them up on their online website first. And then if I wanted them, um, I could call and, and let her know and she would put a, a pair aside in my size. Now, to me, that's, that's going over and above. That's amazing customer service. She really was listening. She really was paying attention. And, uh, and she really seemed to care. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's a completely different example from the grocery store one. And I regret that I never did return her call because I was in the middle of an extremely busy time right then. I had decided I would keep the shoes that I had bought because they're very cute. Um, but I really felt special and cared for by this person. And so I don't know if she'll ever listen to this, but, um, and I don't know if I have her name right even, but I, um, I was really impressed 
by that level of customer service. And I think that's the ticket, is making the customer feel special, or if not special, because you don't want to do it in a fake way, but at least making them feel as though they are worth your time. Because the person in the uh, printing shop, you know, I was, um, I was definitely interrupting and not really worth her time. Um, it felt that way. Now, on the other uh, side of the coin, some customers are monstrous to deal with. Uh, I worked for years in the service industry, as I said before, and there are some pretty demanding, miserable, cranky people out there who seem to think that just because you are a server or a clerk that they can treat you badly. And I know that um, that people in healthcare say that too. There are an awful lot of nurses and uh, and people in the nursing industry that get treated badly as well in, in that service role. And I don't know where that comes from. But I do know that it comes from a place of judgment. And, uh, and I, don't, I don't think that's fair. You know, it doesn't matter what job you do. You're still a human being. So after dealing with several people who are like that in a day, I know it can be very hard to remain pleasant and kind and profession- professional. But I need to say that it's absolutely essential if you're going to be um, perceived as someone who does their job well, right? So here's something to consider, some things to consider. And the first one is that you are the first person, if you are in service, in customer service, you are the first person representing your company that the customer encounters. So how you treat the customer is going to reflect upon the entire organization. When I talk to my healthcare students about this topic, I remind them that the people that they are dealing with are often sick or in pain or scared or all three. And my students are the ones that you see at the nursing desk, uh, nursing unit clerks. If you're not sure what a nursing unit clerk is, you can go to uh, www.communicationdiva.com forward slash nursing unit clerk, and it'll take you to an article that describes what that job is. Or uh, they are often the people that work in the doctor's offices at the desk, the medical office assistants or MOAs. And they're in uniform usually, and they're the people who answer the phone and do the paperwork and keep everybody else on the team organized. And they are an integral part of the team. You know, the term uh, assistant or clerk um, sometimes can cause people to look down on them for some reason. And, uh, and, and in some parts of the world, they have different names, but they're essential people and they are the front, uh, the front line face that customers, clients, patients see. And so their job is super, super important. The way that they treat people being friendly and helpful and calm can make a world of difference. It can breed confidence in the medical system. It can help the other person to relax a little bit and feel that they can trust that the rest of the team is going to be as professional as this person who has answered the phone or who has greeted them at the desk. It's absolutely vital that uh, the person who is doing this job has some communication skills and has uh, the concept of what customer service is all about. It's, It's basically being an ambassador, you know. And so I tell my students not to underestimate the impact that they will have on the people that they serve, because it's a big one. And I think that kind of thing can translate to all sorts of different places, not just in, in healthcare. So, so as a customer service person, no matter where you are, customer, patient, client, whatever, you are representing your entire organization. So that's one thing. The, the second and more important thing to consider, I think, is that you're representing yourself, right? So how you treat others directly reflects upon you. And I think that is even more important than how it reflects upon the company because Customer service providers come and go. You're going to work for that company and you're probably not going to work for that company forever. But your your work ethic and your reputation and the way you conduct yourself will be memorable and will, uh, will you know, show up on reference letters and things like that. So that is even more important. If you're pleasant and helpful and professional, despite how the other person behaves, then you'll be doing yourself a favor. 
I wrote an article a little while back on um, acting versus reacting. And, and you can find that on the website too. I can't remember what the shortened link for it is, but I'll put it in the show notes if you want to read it. And I'll summarize it a, a, a little bit here. People in the service industry who understand this acting versus reacting concept are going to do much better than those that don't. And and I actually believe firmly that working in the service of others is one of the best ways to learn life skills and people skills, and in no way is a waste of time. You know, sometimes my, my students come and say, oh, well, I, I just worked at McDonald's. And I'll say, great, because I know that they have a fabulous training program. And I know that people who come out of that industry very often have fantastic people skills and are able to deal with all sorts of different situations. It kind of drives me nuts when people look down their noses at those who serve them food or help them find clothes or who wash the floors or whatever. You know, those jobs need to be done. And the people who are doing them are people first and they're janitors or servers or whatever after. And so, um, so this, this, I am better than you. Oh, lowly clerk attitude is, is just wrong. And, uh, I'm not sure what you think about that, but it kind of drives me crazy. One of the most interesting people who I have great respect for is someone I encountered in the service industry and Believe it or not, he's a hot dog salesman, and I'm really hoping that he'll come on in the show one of these days, and I can introduce you to him and tell you all about him. He's actually become a little bit of a local celebrity. Other people have recognized his commitment to what it is he does, his attention to the human beings that come to his stand. Uh, he's a bit of a philosopher. He is uh, a very interesting person who can talk on a variety of topics, and yet he's the hot dog salesman. You know, and and so again, it's it's more the person behind the job that is is interesting to me. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm losing my uh, self in my notes here a little bit. Back to acting versus reacting. People everywhere have problems, right? And people often take them out on unsuspecting strangers, and sometimes don't realize they're doing it. So if you are a reactive person, if you are somewhere, someone whose temperature rises and falls in reaction to how other people treat you, then you're going to have some serious issues, <laughs> probably some serious medical issues, my friends. You're going to have blood pressure going up and down. You're going to be mad about something pretty much all of the time. Reacting is an emotional, extremely emotional uh, way to live, and it means that you're going to allow other people to dictate how you feel all the time. So you're basically handing over the reins to everyone you meet and letting them go to it. And I would think that that would be an extremely exhausting way to live. Now, of course, we react from time to time. But do you react all the time? Is that your default? Or can you remain uh, in control, hanging on to the reins of your own emotional mood, despite what other people are doing? It's a good thing to think about right? Here's an example. You come home from work from being or from being out somewhere and your roommate, and it can be your spouse, your friend, your child, whatever, substitute that, is in a really crappy mood and is storming about the house, slamming cupboards and, you know, banging about and obviously having a little fit about something. You, on the other hand, have had an excellent day and you're in an upbeat and positive mood about whatever's been going on for you this day. And now you have to come home and deal with this cranky person. So you've got a couple of choices here. You can allow yourself to be sucked right into that bad mood, and that would be called, be called reacting, right? Or you can continue to enjoy your own mood. Now, I would exercise caution with your roommate, of course, but by not getting sucked into whatever's going on for them, because whatever's going on for them is their problem, right? And so if you are able to step back and not get sucked in to the bad mood that the other person is, is uh, currently enjoying, you would be acting rather than reacting. So you would not be letting how the other person is feeling dictate your own mood, behavior, response. It sounds easy, right? <laughs> well, it's not. Because it's a lot easier to react than and to get sucked into how other people are, are are feeling than it is to remain 
um, you know, in control of your own emotions. So it's something to think about. You know, people who are involved in customer service, those who have to deal with cranky customers and who are good at it, get this concept. Really good customer service representatives can remain pleasant and professional despite the moods and attitudes of their clients. And and this shows a real understanding of the concept of acting rather than reacting. And you can watch this in action next time you're out and about. Pay attention to how people in the stores and the restaurants are treating the people behind the desk and vice versa. Take a look at how the um, the clerk or the, the server is reacting and see whether or not they're acting or reacting. You can actually watch this experiment. Be a spy unsuspecting, right? The problem is that not all people in customer service understand this concept. <laughs> there was a radio teaser on recently about a poll naming the store with the worst customer service in the Vancouver area. And I missed the actual show, which is unfortunate. Um, but I was hazarding a few guesses myself because I have been noticing some pretty mediocre to bad instances of customer service. And I'm wondering, is it a lack of training on a part of the store or the restaurant? You know, is it, is it a lack of understanding on the part of the worker? Is it a general decline in basic good manners on the part of the customer or the part of the worker? You know, like, like how are manners? That's a topic for a whole other podcast. But <laughs> what are manners? Um, you know, how are they influencing this? I'm not sure. But I, I'm kind of imagining that it would be a bit of all three. You know, restaurants and, and stores that take the time to really train their staff well in customer service understand the concept of acting versus reacting, you know, um, and, and not everybody gets that training. Let's look for a minute again at my three examples. Just, just, um, I just want to go back over them for just a moment. The first one, the woman in the printing store who didn't look up from the desk when I walked in, her nonverbal communication to me was I'm doing so something much more important than you are to me, so you'll have to wait. Now, she didn't say that, right? But when I walked into the store and she didn't look up, her communication to me was, I'm doing something more important, and you're not that important, and you're going to have to wait. Now, she knew I was there. It was a really tiny office with a bell on the door. So the correct thing to have done would have been for her to look up at me and smile and say something like, I'll be with you in just a moment. And then, you know, finish what she's doing and then then come and talk to me. And that would have been wonderful. Acknowledgement is huge. You know, just being acknowledged would have told me, you are important to me, to us, to our business, whatever. And I just need to finish this one thing and then I'll, I'll be right with you. It's such a simple thing. It's easy. It's efficient. But that's not what happened. Then she communicated by almost sighing. You know, her whole body language showed me that she really didn't want to have to deal with what I was asking for. It was too much bother. And again, she didn't say any of that, but she did completely say that with her nonverbal language. Now, if I was a more confrontational and aggressive person, I might have said, well, if it's too much trouble for you, I'll go somewhere else, you know. <laughs> but I'm not like that, so I didn't. I continued to be pleasant, even though she wasn't being very pleasant. And eventually she came around and she decided to be of assistance. I kind of find it amazing that a company would have somebody like that at their front desk. But, you know, I didn't react. I acted. So there's, there's that difference, right? The second, um, the second story we'll go back to was the defensive grocery store clerk, right? And that was really a little bit over the top. I, I really was surprised by that. She was obviously having a bad day. She was taking personally my question about the gift card. You know, she was taking it personally as though I had questioned her knowledge of what was uh, in the store or what was up on that board. And, uh, and she was completely um, reacting. And, and what I should have done, actually, was go to speak to the manager because her behavior was completely horrendous. She was bringing her baggage to work. She was taking it out on the customers. And in my opinion, there's absolutely no excuse for that. You know, everybody has a bad day from time to time. Everybody gets cranky and maybe wishes that they were doing something else. I know I have many times wished that. But if you want to be seen as a professional, competent, efficient person who's good at what you do, you've got to leave that bad mood at home. And if you can't leave it at home, you've got to at least fake it or cover it up or let it go for a few hours 
and then go back to your misery when, when you're off shift if you want. But um, if you cannot do that, then just stay home for the day because you'll do less damage to your own reputation and to the reputation of your company than if, if, you, uh, if you let your bad mood shine for all to see. Because what's going to happen is if you're in a bad mood, people around you are either going to choose to act or react. And chances are many of them will react. And if they react, then you're going to have a whole office full of cranky people. Right? And people do this unconsciously. And so if you're in a cranky mood, uh, you watch. Other people will begin to be in a cranky mood if they are not aware of this acting versus reacting uh, mechanism. Right? So I know full well that there are mean customers out there who can be completely miserable and unreasonable. A good manager will recognize this too and will stand up for any worker who's being bullied outrightly or abused. You know, nobody needs to be treated that way, no matter who you are or what job you're doing. But in general, I'm talking about normal everyday customers, and I certainly was not being rude or unreasonable. And, and in this example, the grocery store clerk was kind of over the top. So how you behave as a customer service provider will directly reflect back onto both yourself and the company you work for. I said that already, and, and that's always true. Um, is it worth reacting to a difficult customer or bringing your own emotional stuff to work and risking your reputation and the businesses? I, I don't think so. I don't think it's ever worth that. You know, customer service is a little bit of a dance, and I fully understand that it's not an easy dance, you know? Um there, there are lots of, of tempers and, uh, and requests and things that have to be tiptoed around sometimes. And, uh, you know, that, that old saying that the customer is always right. I don't agree with that. I think the customer can often be unreasonable, but a good per, a good training in customer service will help the worker to deal with, with the complete unreasonableness of some people, right? Um, the last example, the one from Macy's, was an example of somebody who understood her job very well. And I neglected to tell you at the beginning of my story how insanely busy it was in the store that day. It was a long weekend. It might have been a long weekend in Canada, which in that town translates to an extremely busy um, uh, shopping weekend because boatloads, it seems, of Canadian people <laughs> cross the border and go shopping and the lineups can be an hour, an hour and a half, two hours long to get down there um, for the sales and the deals. And and there was a shoe sale on at the store at the same time. And so the store was absolutely teeming with people. We were lined up for quite some time to pay at the till. And, you know, I would have expected maybe the people behind the till to rush to get people through the lines. But this person didn't do that. She was pleasant. She was helpful. She managed to make me feel important despite how busy it was. And she was just really good at her job. And, you know, if I had had the chance, I would have loved to have phoned her back and said thank you and said you are really good at your job. Because I think it's important to acknowledge people and tell them, that uh, you appreciate them. So I've kind of blabbed on for quite some time now. I'm going to leave you in a moment here to think about whether or not you act or react, either as a customer or as a worker. Do you have control over your own moods or do you allow other people to dictate the climate for you? Do you treat other people kindly and pleasantly, even if they're not kind and pleasant back to you? Or do you match how you treat them to how they treat you? Just think about that and maybe notice that when you're going around uh, your life the next week or so. And about customer service. Uh, what's your experience been with customer service? Do you work in the industry? I'd love to hear from you if you do. Do you own a business and have employees to train in this regard? Uh, and what are the challenges in that, in that area? Are you a customer with a story to tell? Right? I'd love to hear um, from you about this topic. There's so much more to be said, I'm sure. And again, I'm going to try and get somebody who teaches customer service training to come and, uh, and do an episode with us sometime. But until then, I want to thank you for listening. Thank you so much again for joining the Communication Diva community. Please come over and say hello so that we know who you are. And until next time, this is Jen Swanson. Happy communicating.